With any gel coat sample, we suggest that you uh, clean the surface with a, a rubbing compound to get rid of any oxidization, oil, residue, anything that may be left on there. So we're going to use the Rayplex number 100 uh, buffing compound and just take a little bit of the compound, put it on there and just rub it with a rag. There it is, we've cleaned the surface. Welcome to the Rayplex color matching bench and today we're going to match this sample that came off an old sailboat hull. But, and we're going to be using the NYX Mini 3. It's advisable that every once in a while to check your NYX Mini meter, uh, Mini 3 meter with the, di uh, the NYX color sensor diagnostic tile. What this is, is scan the code, put it down on there, put your NYX on top of it, and then take a reading, and that will reset it to a factory accurate number. When you're going to take a, a reading and a, off a sample that has to be matched, you need to place a piece of film on it. The reason for it is that there's a small discoloration, and actually there's a bit of yellowing, and it will lower the luminance of the, uh, of the reading you're going to get. Okay, we're going to take a reading off of the sample with the meter and sometimes there's a problem that if you're in a very bright area the film may actually allow light to enter into the reading cell so sometimes we're just pressing down on here to seal it. So we've got a new reading here off, off the meter. You can see here's where the illuminance is. It's about the, the 89 mark and there it is in the center of the screen. Now we're going to start with our match and to start with we've got some white gel coat which is what we're going to blend to try and get the right color. So we'll start with white and we're going to put the film over, put the meter over it and we'll take a reading and we've got a set of numbers 94.53, 0 0.45, and 1.41. I'll enter them now. Okay, we've taken a reading now off of the white gel coat, and the numbers are 94.44, and 1.17. We've entered them in the mix, mix number one, which is where we're going to work from and you can see that it's a little lighter on the luminance side and you can see it's at the bottom here and this is where we've got to pull out so it's almost about eight or nine points below uh, the standard that we've got to work to. Okay we're going to add a small amount of ox uh, oxide 10 uh, LDX mix to the white and see where it comes up on the on the chart. Okay, we've taken a reading, and here's the numbers we, uh, the meter has told us, and we've entered them into the program as to into mix number two, and you can see that it's getting very, very close. If we can get it inside that line of one, we're pretty well got it. So I'm going to add a little bit more pigment to it, um, oxide 10, 
and we'll see how close we can get it. Uh, we should be, okay, I've added, it's added a little bit more uh, oxide 10 pigment into here. We can record now? Yep. Uh, we've now up to mix number three, and you can see we've just come up a little bit. We don't want to overshoot too much, so we're going to have to go back and add a little bit more uh, oxide 10 pigment into this and see if we can bring it up even closer. Take another reading. Okay. Okay, we've come up even closer. We're now within the two envelope. Uh, I'm going to add a touch more of the pigment in, and then I want to pull this this way. So I'm going to add a touch of green into there at the same time. Uh, so that should pull it more towards the center. Okay, we've added some more oxide tan pigment into here and we're going to take another reading off it. Let's see how close this one comes up. Okay, here's our numbers, 90.64, 3.89, 8.63. Okay, we've entered the numbers in, and you can see we've slightly overshot the baseline that we were looking to, but that's not very much. So now let's add a touch of green and see about pulling it to the left here, or the negative A. Mm -hmm. You are? Yeah. Okay, and the numbers are 90.237, 2 2.78, 8.08. Okay, we've entered the numbers in, and you can see now M6 is just touching on the center line, and it's almost within the 1, which is considered an acceptable match. Uh, so let's just add a touch more green to it. You can see where we've gone from M5, which is high, to a little bit of green. Adding more will probably drop its uh, luminance down ever so slightly. So let's go and do that. Be too much.
And the numbers are 90.16, 1.71, and 7.64. So let's enter them in the program and see where we are. Okay, here we are. We've turned around and we pulled this in. We're just we're within the half uh, point mark of being a, an acceptable match. You see, we went from M6 down here to M7. So let me do a little magic and clear this reading off of here and we'll <coughs> uh, see what it looks like in a finer scale. Recording. One of the features of the programs is that you can hide a reading. You can see here it's marked a show. That was the number one that was way at the bottom, but what that did was now make the scale a lot finer, so instead of 10 points, we're now down to four, and you can see here's our final reading of M7. If we wanted to pull that up a little more, we could add a touch of super white into it. Uh, so there you go. That's an acceptable match. Anything within the one range uh, or the 0.5 range is considered acceptable. Poor We're going to take a sample off of this and cure it and compare the two of them. Okay, let's add a little bit of catalyst to this. Usually what we found is that the samples tend to become a little lighter uh, when they cure with the addition of catalyst. That's also known as an offset number, which we've got built into the program. There we have it. Tomorrow we'll uh, allow that to harden and we'll compare the two of them uh, tomorrow. Here are all the color samples that uh, we pro that progressed along to get the final match color. And you can see here's the final and here's the uh, actual gel coat sample that was created. Now it's time to get our sample numbers off our gel coat and check for accuracy of the match. So put the NYX meter on there, we'll trigger it on the phone, and we've got our numbers. We've entered the numbers in here ahead of time. There you go. And you can see that the... Next, we need to take a reading off of the, the sample we created, or the color match sample we created. We'll do this using the NYX Mini 3. We've got our numbers on the phone. Let's, I've pre-entered them into the system here. You can see it as mix number one. Now we'll look at it on the chart. And here it is on the vector program. You can see it's within the center circle, which means it's a good match. So here it is at M1, just slightly a bit high, which is fine. Anything within that center circle is acceptable.